Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Raz and in this video, we will continue our discussion about allowable deductions, particularly the interest as an itemized deduction against our gross income. If you're ready, let's start! But before we start our discussion, let us first define what is an interest. Interest is the cost of using or borrowing someone's money. This is the amount that if we are the borrower, that we pay in excess of the principal amount that we owed from the lender. On the lender's part, this interest is an income, a return for using his money lent to someone, the borrower. While on the borrower's part, this interest is an expense or cost for using someone's fund over a period of time. This interest is not assumed. This is agreed upon between the lender and the borrower under the contract of loan. Interest could be computed using the simple interest method or the amortization method or the effective interest method. In this video, we will not show how to compute interest using the simple interest method or the amortization interest method. Again, our focus in this video are the tax rules on how we can claim interest expense as a deduction against our gross income. As a rule, the amount of interest paid or incurred within a taxable year on indebtedness in connection in the taxpayer's profession trade or business shall be allowed as deduction from gross income since our first video lecture about allowable deductions the itemized deductions the expenses i have mentioned that to claim deduction or charges against your gross income these items must be ordinary necessary and substantiated and when we say ordinary this must be in connection with a taxpayer's trade, business, or profession. When I say necessary, these expenses or items must be necessary in the conduct of business. For example, if you are claiming interest as a charge or deduction against your gross income, you must first consider whether the indebtedness that these interests arise from must be related to the taxpayer's practice of profession or business. In short, the indebtedness where this interest comes from or derived from must be in connection or must be used in business. If the indebtedness or loan of the taxpayer is a personal and not connected to his trade or business, the interest thereon cannot be deducted from the gross income, provided that the taxpayer's allowable deduction for the interest expense shall be reduced by 33% of the interest income subjected to final tax. Before an interest can be deducted from our gross income, always remember that there are some interest expense which are subject to the limit, and this is the limit, the 33%. This means that if the taxpayer incurred interest expense and on the other hand also earned interest incomes which were subjected to final tax like the interest income from bank deposits or the interest income from foreign currency deposits as we remember these interest incomes from those deposits were subject to final tax the 20 percent and the 15 percent before we can deduct interest expense from the gross income, we must first multiply the interest income with 33% and that 33% will be deducted to our interest expense. That is the limit. Later in this video, I will illustrate how is the limit computed for the interest expense given that a taxpayer has an interest income. Okay. The following requirements must be present before a deduction for interest may be claimed. First, there must be an indebtedness, which pertains to the taxpayer. As I have mentioned a while ago, 
the indebtedness where the interest is coming from or where the interest is derived from must be pertaining to the taxpayer meaning this indebtedness must be of the taxpayer okay and of course the indebtedness must be connected to the business trade or profession of the taxpayer it is important to note that all expenses whether interest or otherwise must be related to the taxpayer's business trade or practice of profession before these items can be claimed against the gross income and there must be a legal which is enforceable by law a legal liability to pay the interest as i have said the interest is not presumed it is it must be agreed upon the lender and the borrower must have come to agree that the borrower will pay an interest to that indebtedness otherwise when the interest is not enforceable it's unenforceable the interest cannot be claimed as deduction from the gross income because it is unenforceable okay it must also be paid or incurred during the taxable year the in any advance interest payments cannot be deducted from the gross income the interest expense must either be accrued or paid if you are a cash basis taxpayer however for cash basis taxpayer who have advanced the payment of interest those advance paid interest cannot be deducted against the gross income they can however be deducted when there is a full payment of the principal so yes interest paid in advance through discount or otherwise shall be claimed as deduction in the year the indebtedness is paid as i have just mentioned so we also have an exception to the rule no deduction shall be allowed in respect of interest number one if such interest is paid in advance during the taxable year and the taxpayer is using cash basis of accounting such interest shall be allowed for deduction in the year the indebtedness is paid so for example if you are a cash basis taxpayer meaning you are engaged into servicing business you must be using cash base of accounting right and you have paid in advance the interest of a loan which is connected to your business those advance payment of interest cannot be deducted from your gross income if the term of the loan is three years you can only deduct those interest advance paid in the year when the principal amount is fully paid okay if the indebtedness is payable in periodic amortizations only the amount of interest which corresponds to the amortized principal shall be allowed as deduction in such taxable year so let's have an illustration to give light to these sentences paragraphs mentioned situation one juan a cash basis taxpayer borrowed an amount from maria amounting to 100,000 pesos payable after two years the agreement provides that Juan shall pay an advance interest of 10% per year upon the issuance of the proceeds of the loan. So in this case, Juan can only deduct the 20,000 interest which is computed as 100,000 times 10% and since it's 10% per year and the term is 2 years, therefore times two years so the interest expense advanced paid by juan is twenty thousand pesos this interest the twenty thousand interest can only be deducted from juan's gross income if juan or if the loan is already paid after two years so for the first year juan cannot deduct any interest expense for the second year he can deduct the interest expense provided that the entire loan is already paid by Juan. Okay? Because Juan uses cash basis accounting. Okay? We also have here situation 2. Juan, a cash basis taxpayer, borrowed an amount from Maria amounting to 100,000 pesos payable in two-year installment meaning 
for the first year, Juan will pay 50,000 and for the second year, Juan will pay another 50,000 to fully pay the entire principal amount. The agreement provides that Juan shall pay an advance interest of 10% per year upon the issuance of the proceeds of the loan. So, when Juan loaned an amount or borrowed a pound from Maria of 100,000, Juan only receives 80,000 pesos. That is 100,000, the principal amount, less the two-year advance interest because it's an advance interest. It must be deducted from the principal amount. So when Juan received the loan from Maria, instead of receiving 100,000 pesos, Juan only received 80,000 pesos. Okay? Because the two-year interest were already deducted from the proceeds of the loan. So after one year, Juan will pay 50,000 pesos. That is the principal. Juan will no longer have to pay the interest because the interest was already paid in advance, right? So after paying the 50,000 pesos, Juan can now deduct the first year's interest expense as an expense against his gross income on that first year. On the second year, when Juan paid the second installment, Juan can now deduct the other 10,000 interest expense from his gross income. Okay, so under the first case, the first situation, the entire 20,000 pesos can only be deducted upon the full payment of the principal amount. And in the second situation, the interest may be deducted on the year after Juan made the first and second installment. Another exception to the rule, if both the taxpayer and the person to whom the payment has been made or the lender are related. So if the borrower and the lender are related, the borrower could not deduct any interest from his gross income. So what do you think is the reason why any interest from loans between related taxpayers cannot be deducted from the gross income? Actually, the reason is very simple. The law avoids this scheme as a form of tax evasion. Because when the two parties are related, the borrower and the lender are related, meaning the borrower could just ask the lender to fake the interest so that he could claim interest expense from his gross income. And since they're related, of course, it could be made possible. So the law would not allow that. The law avoids this situation to happen. So any interest arising from loans between taxpayers who are related, between the lender and borrowers who are related, any interest cannot be deducted, okay? So when can we say that this lender and borrower are related? What will be the instances when they will be considered as related? Should they be blood related? Or are there any instances where they are not blood related but they could be considered as related? So the following persons are considered related. Letter A, between members of a family. The family of an individual should include his brothers and sisters, whether whole or half-blood, spouse, ancestors, and lineal. So when we say sisters and brothers, whether whole or half-blood, this could be brothers and sisters from both parents or from one parent alone. But since the law does not provide for stepbrothers or stepsisters, they are not considered related. Spouse, ancestors, any person who is in your upper bloodline, your lola, your aunties, your uncles, your lola's mother, your lola's lola, etc. And lineal descendants, your children, your children's children, and their children, okay, so lineal descendants. So those people are considered as family members. So if you are the taxpayer, if you are the borrower, and you loan something from your parents, any interest thereon cannot be deducted from your gross income because you are related by blood.
Letter B, we have between the taxpayer and the corporation where such taxpayer own directly or indirectly more than 50% in the value of the outstanding stocks, except in the case of distributions and liquidation. So when the borrower borrows from a lender corporation and then that corporation is owned by him, let's say 60%, then any interest from that loan could not be deducted from the gross income because the taxpayer and the corporation are said to be related because the shareholding of that taxpayer is more than 50 percent another example people you are a stockholder and then you owned 30 percent only of that corporation and you borrowed an amount from that corporation then since you are not considered as related taxpayer in this particular paragraph, then any interest from that arising from that loan could be deducted from your gross income because your shareholding does not exceed 50%. It is said that you would be considered only as related taxpayer if you own directly or indirectly more than 50% of the total value of the outstanding stocks. Another we have between the grantor and the fiduciary of any trust. So what is this grantor and fiduciary? Let's have an illustration. Juan is a wealthy man. He appoints Pedro to manage his wealth for the benefit of Lucas, his son. So in this case, Juan and Pedro has a trust, okay? This trust benefits Lucas, the beneficiary. Juan, though someone who appoints another person to manage his wealth, is said to be the grantor. While this person being appointed by the grantor to manage the wealth is said to be the fiduciary. So the role of Pedro is to manage, invest, to make more money out of the wealth of Juan. Whenever the trust is earning money, this trust will benefit Lucas. Rich people usually do that, especially when they have no time to manage their wealth. So Juan and Pedro are considered to be related for this purpose. Hence, any interest accruing to either one is non-deductible. So if Pedro loaned something from Juan, then any interest could not be deducted from the gross income of Pedro because they are related. Another we have between the fiduciary of a trust and the fiduciary of another trust if the same person is a grantor with respect to each trust. So for example, here, an illustration, Juan is a wealthy man. He appoints Pedro and Maria to manage his wealth for the benefit of Lucas, his son. So Juan is the grantor, while Pedro and Maria are both fiduciaries of the same grantor. So these same fiduciaries are considered to be related for this purpose. Hence, any interest accruing to them is non-deductible. So if Maria borrowed an amount from Pedro or the other way around, the interest arising from that loan of Pedro or Maria from either of them is non-deductible because they are related parties. Okay? And the last persons who are considered to be related is between the fiduciary of a trust and the beneficiary of such trust. So let us go back to our previous illustration. Juan is a wealthy man. He appoints Pedro and Maria to manage his wealth for the benefit of Lucas. Again, Juan is the grantor. Pedro and Maria are both fiduciaries. So here, Lucas is the son, the beneficiary. Pedro and Maria and also Lucas, the beneficiary, are considered to be related for this purpose. So if Pedro borrowed something from Lucas, assuming Lucas is not a minor, so any interest accruing from the loan to either of them is non-deductible because they, the three of them, are considered to be related. Actually, the four of them 
are related taxpayers. Juan the Grantor, Pedro and Maria the two fiduciaries, and Juan beneficiary Lucas, the four of them are considered to be related. So any interest accruing to any of them is non-deductible. Okay? Another exception. If the indebtedness is incurred to finance petroleum exploration, interest arising from loans which are connected to explore petroleum operations, these are non-deductible interest expense because they are capitalized. They are not expensed. So now that you have an idea of what is an interest and the rules on when can someone claim interest as charges against his gross income and of course the exceptions where interest cannot be deducted from the gross income now let's talk about the optional treatment of interest expense okay there are some situations or transactions which would involve large amounts of money for example if you are constructing a building or if you are purchasing an equipment which will involve large amount of money and you cannot afford to buy that equipment so you would secure a loan from a bank or a third party so actually you have an option to treat that expense as either capitalizing it or claiming it as an expense charged against your gross income so let's have the optional treatment of interest expense. At the option of the taxpayer, interest incurred to acquire property used in trade, business, or exercise of profession may be allowed as revenue expenditure or treated as capital expenditure subject to depreciation. So for instance, if you are a university, a corporation, and then you secure a loan from a bank, let's say it's 10 million, to finance the construction of a new building. Any interest arising from that loan could be capitalized or expensed immediately. If you will expense that immediately, then the entire expense incurred or paid could be deducted against your gross income. But if you capitalize the interest as part of the cost of the property, then this could be treated as subject to depreciation since the interest then is already part of the cost of the property. Either way, you still deduct the interest. It's just the manner on how or when this interest could be deducted against your gross income, either as revenue expenditure or as capital expenditure. In the latter case, the interest expense will essentially become part of depreciation expense. So these are the summary of rules on deductible interest. Interest expense on tax delinquency or deficiency provided the tax is related to the trade or business or practice of profession or any interest owing to the government is deductible in full amount let's say that you have unintentionally failed to file taxes in the year 2015 and here comes the BR gives you an assessment in the assessment it is said that you are going to pay this amount the tax which should have been paid five years ago and also, it said that aside from this deficiency tax, you also need to pay the surcharges and interest. The interest for delinquency or deficiency taxes, by the way, is 12%. So this interest arising from your liability to pay taxes to the government, this interest should be deducted in full amount against your gross income again if this interest arise from your obligation to the government let's say taxes so these interest are deducted in full amount against your gross income if other than that 
interest incurred for liabilities contracted in connection to the conduct of trade business or practice of profession these interests are subject to limit partial deduction which i have already mentioned that is 33 percent and we are yet to give an illustration so that you would know how this limit is computed okay so interest related to the acquisition of property used in trade or practice of profession at the option of the taxpayer may be treated as an outright expense or capitalized okay again if the interest is arising from a loan in which connected to acquisition or construction of property this could be outright expensed or capitalized and finally we have interest incurred or paid to persons classified as related taxpayers or to finance petroleum exploration and interest to preferred stockholders which is treated by the way as dividends these interests are non-deductible okay so now let us illustrate all of these rules okay apple corporation is engaged in trading business the reported income and expenses for taxable year 2018 are as follows we have sales 10 million we have cost of sales that is 6 million we have general business expenses 1 million we have interest on peso time deposit so this interest is actually a passive income the gross amount here is 100,000 pesos interest earned under the foreign currency depository system the gross amount we have 20,000 pesos and also we have interest income from installment receivables we have 120,000 pesos we also have here interest expenses claimed on loans payable that is 180,000 on deficiency taxes that is 30,000 pesos and on a loan from B Corporation a parent company 10,000 pesos so we are asked how much is a total deductible interest expense so before we go into the solution let us first analyze this problem to make it simpler so we have here um sales cost of sales business expenses and we are given three interest incomes so this interest on peso time deposit as we know in our previous video lecture this is a passive income subject to a final tax and that final tax is 20 percent and this interest earned under the foreign currency depository system this is also a passive income subject to 15 percent final tax while this interest income from installment receivables though this is a passive income this interest income is not subject to a final tax because as we know only those interest income arising from yield in bank deposits are subject to final tax hence among the three we only have two incomes two interest incomes which are subject to final tax take note of this amount the 100,000 and 20,000 pesos we will use this amount okay well this one the interest income from some receivables this will be added to our gross income since this interest income is not subject to final tax this will be added to our gross income also we have here interest expenses claimed so we know since this is in connection with a trade this is deductible but this will be subject to limit and this interest expense on deficiency taxes as i have said interest on deficiency taxes are deducted in full amount here in the last interest expense since this is a loan from b corporation a parent company this could not be deducted 
because they are related taxpayers. Okay? So our solution would be, again, we are only asked for the total deductible interest expense. So we will focus our solution here. Okay? Only these items are significant. Again, this interest expense arising from deficiency taxes, this is deductible in full. And this interest expense arising from loans payable, this is subject to limit. While this interest expense from a loan from B Corporation, this is non-deductible. So we already have the idea of what amounts are going to be needed in our computation. However, take note here, we have an interest expense subject to If you remember in our discussion a while ago in this video, we, we mentioned that for, for those interest expense accruing or arising from loans which are incurred in connection to the taxpayer's trade or business or practice or profession, this could be subject to a limit and that limit is 33% of the interest incomes which are subjected to final tax and we only have two interest incomes here which were subjected to final tax these are the interest on peso time deposit and interest earned under foreign currency deposit system so these two amounts we will add that together the 100,000 and 20,000 and we will multiply the total amount by 33% to get the limit. So let's have the solution. Interest on deficiency tax, this is deductible in full. So that is 30,000 pesos. And interest on loan, there is a partial deduction only. So we have the interest claimed as expense, we have 180,000 pesos. But we will reduce that amount by the 33% limit. So what is the limit? We have here interest on peso time deposit, that is 100,000, and interest on foreign currency deposit, that is 20,000 pesos. So a total of 120,000 pesos. These interest incomes, these were subjected to final tax. Okay? Hence, we will multiply that gross amount by 33% and we will get 39,600 pesos. So this is the limit, the 39,600. That 39,600 will be deducted from our interest claimed, the 180,000 pesos. So we will get 140,400 pesos. So adding these together, the 30,000 and 140,400, we will get a total deductible interest expense of 170,400 pesos. So this is now the amount that we can deduct from our gross income as interest. So remember, there are four rules. First, any interest on deficiency or delinquency taxes or any interest to liabilities to the government shall be deductible in full. While those interests arising from loans which are in connection to the taxpayer's trade or business, they will be deductible but subject to limit. And hence, this is the limit. We also have interest expense arising from acquisition of properties and the taxpayer has the option to either capitalize or expense outright. In the last one, those interests arising from related taxpayer transactions, they cannot be deducted. Okay? When computing limit, always remember that there should be an interest income where we can multiply the 33%. And when we get the limit, we will deduct this amount from our interest expense. When identifying the interest incomes to be multiplied by the limit of 33%, only those interest incomes which have been subjected to final tax. Do not include the interest incomes which were never subject to final tax. You might be wondering how about if there is no interest income subject to final tax. 
then there is no limit. The whole amount will be deducted from the gross income. There will be nothing to deduct. That's it. Those were the rules when claiming interest as an expense from the gross income. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned a lot from this video and you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I will upload new videos in the future time. Bye-bye!